I want to go over the mechanics and calculations for the SodaCam calorimeter lab, okay? So I put my setup back together. There's, this is my soda can calorimeter, literally a soda can calorimeter, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna pour 50 milliliters, 50 milliliters of water into the soda can calorimeter, okay? And then, again, remember you just thread it through that. Have extra cans when you do this, okay? Because they pop off. Those little tabs, they're made just from aluminum, they pop off, okay? And you want this over whatever you're testing. In this case, this is a puff, okay? So you're going to get the temperature of the water before you heat it, okay? We'll write it down. Then you're going to light, you have already taken your mass of your puff, okay? You're gonna light that puff. After it stops burning, okay, you allow this to cool, but you immediately take the temperature of the water and record what that temperature was, okay? So there's our lab. You, of course, you wanna do three trials for each piece of food, ideally, at least a couple different foods. We're gonna use now the sample data for the cheese puff, all right? We're gonna do that and show you how these calculations, what they are and how they work, okay? So the equation is Q is M times C times delta T. So what are they? The Q is the measure of the heat value. In this case, we're measuring calories. So what we're doing is burning food to determine how many calories are in the food. And we're assuming that all the energy, the heat from the food is transferred to the water inside the soda can calorimeter. So in this case, we have 50 grams of water. And you're saying, where'd you get that? We have 50 milliliters of water. The density of water is one gram per milliliter. That means 50 milliliters has a mass of 50 grams. So our mass of water is 50 grams. Okay, now, C is specific heat. For water, the specific heat is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Now, with the sample data, it is saying that the change in the temperature inside the calorimeter before and after burning the puff was 5.3 degrees Celsius. And what you can see then is the units cancel and we're left with our measurement calories. Now, by definition, again, we're measuring, so how many food calories are in the puff, all right? The calorie is the energy required to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So when we multiply 50 times one times 5.3, our answer is going to be 265 calories. And you're saying, so does that mean that puff has 265 calories? Not quite, okay. Bef what we have to understand, that first let's do the mass of the cheese puff. For the sample data, they took the cheese puff, they also measured they could, you could do this too. You could just measure the wash glass with the cheese puff before and after. So it's easier to weigh it, okay? And they're saying that the cheese puff itself, the amount that burnt, the amount that burnt, that means the energy in the cheese puff you burnt that heated the water was 0.1 grams, okay? Now, before we can figure out the calories in per gram for this cheese puff, we have to understand something. The food calories are actually kilocalories. So we have to take, we determine this is 265 calories, we have to divide it by 1,000, and that's food calories, I put it capital letters, okay? So now, if we're gonna figure out the calories per gram for our puff, we take 0.265 calories, divided by the mass, the change in the mass, 0.1, and we get 2.65 calories per gram. So it's a little more complicated when we're doing this. So you then, of course, ideally, you wanna do this for each food three times. Don't forget to start with cold water for each trial. Don't forget to get the difference in temperature before and after. Now, if you just want to do one trial so you can see how this works, that's fine too. And if you also, if you do not have, again, your scale, a ring stand, 
you can just use the sample data, take the sample data and go through these cap calculations and label so you understand that how they get calories. Now, we're gonna have, if you compare this to the actual calories, say in a puff or a veggie puff, one of those, you're gonna see a big margin of error. The reason is we're using a soda can for a calorimeter. When nutritionists figure out the number of calories per gram for food, they're using actually something called a bomb calorimeter, it's sealed. However, you're gonna get, get some data, and it's not gonna be that far-fetched. This works better with dry foods. Um, it does, again, and also foods like that are carbohydrate-based, it works better for that than it does for something like a cashew or a peanut, all right?